Hey everyone, Morgan here. So we're on page three of the thermodynamics lecture for AP Chemistry, and we're going to be introducing the concept of the second law today. And we're going to learn as we progress through the chapter that there's a lot of different ways of looking at the second law. It's not just related to chemistry. You will find chapters about it in a physics book, in a biology book, in earth sciences, in astronomy. It is a very ubiquitous topic when we are looking at the sciences. Now we're going to go with a generally low level discussion of it today. Not terribly mathematical. Okay, So we'll start off with a kind of silly question. What happens when you try to clean up your room? Well, there's two things to make note of really. The first is that you do work and that's going to become a very important theme for how we look at this chapter. For your room to get cleaned up, you have to do work. Also, we need to know that the trash from your room has to go somewhere. It does not just mystically disappear. The dump gets messy. <laughs> it goes to the landfill. All right, so as a general statement, and one that's somewhat controversial maybe with our new definitions of entropy that we're looking at, we can say that the second law of thermodynamics states the entropy of the universe is constantly increasing. It is always going up. Now this was not our original statement of the second law. The second law has developed over several hundred years and one of the first and very intuitive statements dealt with heat. The Clausius statement which says that it is impossible to have a natural process whose sole outcome is the transfer of heat from a colder body to a hotter body. Heat doesn't work that way. Heat flows from higher temperature to lower temperature. If you are in the kitchen and someone is cooking and they say, don't touch that skillet, the skillet is hot, and then you grab onto the skillet, the skillet doesn't get hotter and scream, ouch. You do. <laughs> Heat goes from the high temperature skillet into your hand, not the other way around. Okay? Now, a good little thinking exercise is the refrigerator. This might actually describe a refrigerator, huh? But we're talking about a natural process. A refrigerator is not a natural process. It's a machine. It has a motor. That motor uses energy to do work to cause that to happen, to take the heat out of the inside of the refrigerator and put it out into the outside world. Okay? There's also the Kelvin statement, Lord Kelvin. It is impossible to have a natural process whose sole outcome is the transfer of energy as heat perfectly to work. If we are going to use heat to perform work, it is not going to be 100% efficient. That does not happen. You never have 100% efficiency. Okay, so that's how the brakes on your car work. <laughs> Energy is transferred into them, okay, and that slows the car down. So if you picture a railroad car from the 1800s and the locomotive part, people are shoveling coal into it and it's burning and it's incredibly hot and the people surrounding it are sweating as they shovel all that coal in. 
that coal is actually turning that energy into work. But it's not 100% efficient. If it was, those people would not be sweating. It wouldn't be hot around that engine. Okay? Now, a more recent statement from the 1960s, the Andrews Statement, says that the properties of an isolated system eventually quit changing. And that is actually a really good statement right there. Okay? It tells us that if you have something like a mouse inside of a bell jar with no additional oxygen being added in, that mouse cannot survive like that forever. It's going to use up the oxygen that's in there. Okay? Now, this is also a statement that has a lot of implications for the environmental movement. Okay, so if we wanted to put this into an equation, and this is not an equation that you're actually going to be solving, it just paints a picture here. The change in entropy total, delta S total, will always equal the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings, which must always be greater than or at the minimum equal to zero. Entropy is always going to increase. Now, the, one of the very, very original definitions of entropy talked about how an infinitesimal change in entropy, ds, is equal to the infamous of infinitesimal, sorry about that, the infinitesimal change in heat added reversibly to a system divided by temperature. Now this is not something you're going to have to solve. Don't worry about that. What it means is as you are pumping heat into a system, it's going to cause the particles to move more. And that's going to increase the number of states that they can exist in, and there will be a corresponding increase in entropy. Some people like to write this as delta S is equal to delta H over T under certain circumstances, but not universally true. We're talking about heat that's being added reversibly. Okay, that's it for page three of the outline. Tune back in for page four. This is Morgan signing off.